Good morning. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, in lieu of our normally huge Thanksgiving gathering, my family and I tried to make uh, Thanksgiving family favorites ourselves. Uh, we tried to make my stepsister Beth's cranberries, my wife's parents' deviled eggs, and uh, my mom's uh, stuffing. And even though we desperately missed seeing everybody piled in our house, we had so much joy in making those memory connections ourselves. It's almost like they were there with us in spirit, even though they weren't uh, all physically present. Now, miraculously, we were able to pull off, I think, the essence of the spirit of Thanksgiving. Uh, this morning, we aren't gathered at church where we would normally gather, which is hard, especially in the Advent season. But we are gathered in the spirit of Advent. While we cannot gather in person this morning, God's spirit miraculously connects us together. I encourage you to live in the memories of Advents of the past while allowing it to bridge us to new memories together. Watch and wait for Christ's coming like candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. Blessed are you, God of Jacob, for you promise to transform weapons of war into implements of planting and harvest and to teach us your way of peace. You promise that our night of sin is far gone and that your day of salvation is dawning. As we light the candle on this wreath, wake us from our sleep, wrap us in your light, empower us to live honorably and guide us along your path of peace. House of Jacob, come, let us walk into the light of the Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Faithful God, you are at work to restore all of creation in its intended harmony. Give us your shalom that we may be reconciled to all enemies in the peace that passes understanding through Christ Jesus our Lord. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. 
the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the people see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, a voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them to his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this morning, our gospel comes to us from Mark 1, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, 
prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance, repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan while confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So when we read a passage, our goal is to try to tie it to the larger biblical story to give it context. Because a story without context can get confusing can lose some of its intended meaning and miss important details that can really bring a story to life. So this morning, let's place the story we just read into its larger context. In the context of the whole Bible, God has a redemptive plan going on since the Garden of Eden. The story goes that the brokenness of this world, something that we're very familiar with right now, entered into the story through the actions of people. Adam and Eve ate the fruit that broke the world. While they suffered consequences personally in the story, the reality is we all suffer from the ripple effects of wrong actions, of sin, our sin, others, leaders, and more. But this story has hope. God, even as Adam and Eve faced their consequences. God promised that he would send someone to make it right again. Someone through the very birth line of Adam and Eve. The people of Israel came out of this lineage. and had been carriers for this messianic line for centuries. It was an incredibly important mission. But while they waited for the Messiah, they had to deal with a daily sin issue. They kept on sinning, just like we all do. Except that Jesus hadn't come yet, so, so what were they to do? Well, things would need to be made right between God and Israel. The Jews would bring their sacrifices to the one tribe in their nation that was completely devoted to helping their people deal with their sins. They were called the Levites, and Zechariah, John the Baptist's father was a Levite priest. Zechariah would go to the temple and offer sacrifices for, for individuals, families, and at certain times of the year for the entire nation of Israel. Now, the reason they had to do this for the entire nation was God had asked them to be a holy and separate community. Remember, they had this really important mission. Routinely, God would send prophets to speak truth into the people of Israel. This would help them make a, make a course correction when the entire community was no longer living up to its ideal condition of being separate and holy. And Zechariah was a, a priest that looked like God had given up on making course corrections. Israel had thought God had gone silent. They had been exiled from their homeland by the Assyrian Empire, given a toehold again by the Babylon Empire, and was now being oppressed by the Roman Empire. The Jews, the, the people that carried the promise of a Messiah, had not heard from God in a long, long time. He hadn't spoken to his people through a prophet for over 400 years to kind of conceptualize, to give you an idea of that kind of time span. We just celebrated Thanksgiving this last week. 400 years ago, pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock. So you can see why Israel was having a hard time remembering that God speaks. The story this morning begins with Zechariah. A man who is doing his best to follow God and hold on to the hope of a Messiah, a Savior. 
He was ministering at the altar of incense, which represented the prayers of the people ascending up to God. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Just a a quick side note. I I love Hallmark Christmas versions of angels, uh, like soft lighting, slightly out of focus. Uh, They're almost like flying babies, small. Every time someone in the Bible encounters an angel, their first reaction is utter terror. They think they're going to die. God does not send angels lightly. So you have to wonder what they what they really look like. I do. Okay, back to our story. So, so an angel appears to Zechariah while he's offering incense in the temple. And the angel of the Lord says to him, the uh, angel calling card reading, uh, fear not. And the angel goes on to tell Zechariah that his wife Elizabeth will have a baby. And that baby will be a prophet set aside from birth and habit, and diet, and dress. That he will have a a great effect on the nation of Israel and make for the Lord a people prepared. Make for the Lord a people prepared. Essentially, God is about to speak again. But Zechariah is, like so many of our Bible characters, he's kind of doubtful because he and his wife are old. They've always been barren. What the angel says is really uh, reality shifting, miraculous. Have you ever seen someone receive such good news that they almost can't process it? Zachariah says to the angel, how can I know this is true? And the angel says, by your silence. And Zechariah is left unable to speak, explain, or communicate anything to the people past the vague sense that he has had a vision. And something immense is about to happen. And just like that, God does something amazing in the life of an elderly, faithful priest. It starts into motion his fix for this broken, sin-stained world. Not long after, their son, John the Baptist, is born. Now, John the Baptist was like was like the warm-up act for the Messiah. John's job was to get the crowd ready to receive the good news that, that not only was God speaking again, but God himself was coming and everything would be different soon. He was to make for the Lord a people prepared. The story of Zechariah is a, a penultimate story before Jesus shows up. It's this unveiling of this message of hope that started in Genesis, right after the fall, carried for centuries through the people of Israel, and culminates with Christ and continues with us. And I think it might be just the story to help us enter into Advent this year. Advent is our time to become a people prepared. So what can we learn from this preemptive Christmas story to reorient our lives around hope? And maybe prepare our hearts for God to do something special and unique this Christmas season. So our goal, after reading a story in the Bible, is to pull out the principles of the story the meat, and figure out how to apply it to our lives. This morning, we have three principles that will change this Christmas for you, I hope. Principle one, God keeps promises. Now, to be specific, it's on God's time, not ours. You see, God had been working out a plan of redemption for centuries. And uh, I get ticked if my minute rice is slow. Sometimes, if I'm honest, uh, I'm not patient. I want things when I want them, and and I don't love to wait. I've played that game in the grocery store where I try to predict the shortest line based on uh, what people have in their carts. Or I'll send uh, Shay and the kids as scouts to look for other lines while I hold a toe in our line. I have a secret for you this morning. 
There are these long stretches of time in Bible history where nothing happens. So the Bible, so the Bible doesn't record them because nothing is happening. I say that because we can read the Bible and get the impression that like awesome, amazing stuff is happening constantly, like seas being split and fire and brimstone should be happening all the time. But we're reading, we're reading the highlights, the biggest moments captured over the centuries. The reality is there are huge stretches of time where there is just a whole lot of, of nothing. Can you imagine if the Bible recorded uh, mundane things like grocery lists, uh, thank you cards, or how hot it was, or what everybody had for lunch? The, the Bible's kind of long enough already. So when, when God doesn't answer a prayer right away, we can get a bit sad. We can get bummed. We can start to think, where did God go? Does God care? Is he listening? And what happened to this God of constant action that I read about in the Bible? I think sometimes we mistake God for a mythical wish genie. When there isn't a response right away, we assume the big guy isn't home or maybe just doesn't care. And sometimes we just need to wait. In a time where we can access everything immediately, I think we might have transferred that same idea to God, who doesn't work off our timeline. In reality, we work off of God's. Which brings us to principle two. We are a part of a redemption plan that is bigger than us. There's a story that we are a thread in the tapestry of. It's almost a relief and a disappointment at the same time. Like, thank goodness my life is not about me. That would be way too much pressure. But there's also a sense of overwhelm and worry. If there are a million threads, then what can my life matter? What difference can it make how I live my life or, or what I do? I think one life matters. Jesus needed John to make a way for him. John needed Zachariah and Elizabeth to make him at all. There are tipping points and ripples outward from one life all the time. But the angel also asked for a people prepared, sometimes a, a grouping of threads being woven together can affect the whole world. And while it may sound silly, in the middle of a pandemic, a church in Waukegan caught a glimpse of a vision of being a bright spot for their community. So people donated, gave their time, came out in the cold, and laid out the lights literally strand by strand. And because a community decided and took action, we now have a football field-sized light display as a little spot of joy for people to enjoy throughout this season. Not only that, but we have a football field-sized invitation to join us in doing things like this. To be silly together, to take care of each other, to be a part of a community of God's people trying to live as a people prepared. Many of you know that, that Bill Kloss died this week, and I've been on the phone with his sister Sarah a few times this week. And something she said to me was really profound. She said, never underestimate the power of reaching out. She said the phone calls to me and the cards to Bill made us feel so seen and cared for. The truth is that each person at St. Mark's acted on their own, wrote their own letter, made their own phone call. But as, at, but as a community, we made a family feel supported, upheld. Each of our threads has a special magic about it. But together... Moved by the Spirit of God, we are incredibly powerful. Marcio wrote this, and I, and I sent this out this week, but in case you didn't see it, he wrote this. My St. Mark's Lutheran Church family. I have no words to express how thankful my Honduran family and I are for all your donations. It's amazing to see how much love, care, and kindness there is in our congregation. It gives me a great feeling 
to know that people are willing to help others when they are in need, even if they don't know who they are. I thank you all and let me assure that my family and I will forever be thankful to you all. God bless you all. Marcio and family. These things are what every pastor hopes for with their church. The congregation understands the power they have in Christ to reach out to those around them. And if that sense of powerful togetherness is new to you, you haven't missed out. In every corner of the world, redemption is waiting for you and for us to do the work of the people prepared. I hope that gives you peace. This week's Advent candle is about that peace. And I think this message gives me peace. You aren't alone. You uh, belong to a community. And within that community, you are powerful. Powerful enough to play a part in God's redemptive plan for the world and with the fortitude to wait through the hard times. We are the people prepared that the angel spoke of. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from light, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and of the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, Comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. 
sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of the earth and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support the advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, tend to those who are sick or struggling with depression, and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we have a few announcements this morning. Uh, come see our Christmas light show. It is running each night from 5 to 11 p.m. Please feel free to come on over to the church parking lot, tune in to our FM station, and enjoy the Christmas music and light show. Uh, a huge thanks to everybody's generosity and hard work. Uh, please check our website for our full holiday schedule. We will only be having one parking lot service in December, which will be Christmas Eve at 4.30. Please join us for that either in person uh, at the church or online. There will also be two Taze services online running at 7 and 11 for those who want a meditative candlelight option. For anyone interested, we wanted to let you know that you can now get COVID updates uh, directly from the Lake County Health Department. This includes our Region 9 numbers, hospital capacity, and vaccine updates. Uh, they've done just a really great job keeping the faith leaders uh, and pastors of Lake County informed, and I thought I would include a link where you can get those updates if you wish as well. Uh, we wanted to extend our sympathies to Sarah Griffin and her family over the loss of her brother Bill Kloss, uh, a beloved member of the St. Mark's community. Please join us this week in lifting up Sarah and her loved ones in prayer as we remember the life of Bill. And now for our blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.